Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can really elevate your designs in Word using text, images and graphics and all the fundamental tools and techniques you'll need. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to insert and we're going to go to text box. You can use Word art if you want to but Word Art, if I click on the drop down, will give you lots of different options on outlines, colours, gradients and shadows. But first of all, I think we just need to look at the text itself. So I'm just going to draw out a text box, draw text box, click and draw out a text box. I'm going to type in my text and if I deselect this box, we've got actually got a black borderline around the outside and also a white background. Now I'm just going to get rid of both of those, that will just give us a bit more flexibility. In order to do that, make sure it's selected, go to Shape Format, go over to this icon which is the outline and select No Outline, go to Shape Fill and select No Fill. Now once I've deselected, I've just got a completely transparent background and just the text. So now I'm going to select the text, I'm going to increase the size of it using this Increase Font Size tool here. You can use the figures if you want to, or you can insert your own by just dragging across the two numbers here and just inserting your own. But I'm just going to click on the increase font size tool, and then I'm going to make sure that my font is centered. Here are your alignment tools here, and just to show you how they work, center, right align, justify, and left align. So we're going to center align our text, and then I'm just going to go up to the font here and I'm going to choose a different font. I'm going to choose this one here and I'm also going to make it bold. So that's that icon there. As you can see, sometimes your text will be quite close together and there's a really useful technique to use for your font which will elevate your design, but not many people know about it. So select your text, right click, and go down to font. Now go to the advanced tool here, go to spacing, click on the drop down and select expand and you'll see one point comes up here. So I'm going to choose 10 and press OK and as you can see we've got greater spaces between all of our characters. So now what I want to do is to put a nice box around the outside and some additional words. So go to insert, go to shapes, click on the drop down select the square, click and draw out the square, don't worry about the colour and then once again we're going to go to shape format over to the outline and select black and then shape fill, select no fill, deselect and we've got this nice borderline around the outside. Now the reason I didn't keep the borderline around the text that you saw earlier is because we've got far more flexibility with moving this border around that won't affect the text. I just feel it just gives us that extra customization. So to make sure that this is in the center, if you can't click on it, it's because actually this shape is above this text here. So you need to go to send backwards, just make sure it's selected, send backwards, center back, and now you should be able to click on the text. Now hold down your command or control key on your keyboard and select the shape or the outline. You can see they're both selected. Go to align, select align to center, which will center it down the middle, and also align to middle. And now that will be perfectly aligned to the middle here. Now you do have to make sure, if I just select this box, that the margin at the top here is the same as the margin at the bottom here, otherwise it won't be aligned. So you can move this up and down to make sure that it's perfectly centered. Okay, so now I'm going to borrow or use this box again by copying and pasting it. Now you can use the normal technique on the home tab, go to copy, deselect, paste, or you can simply select this box, hold down your alt or option key, click and drag. That's a really quick way to use the copy and paste technique. So now I'm going to select catalogue and put in some more text and this time I'm just going to select it and reduce the size of it. This time I'm actually going to need that white bulk background. So you can see if I put it over the top here you can see the line that goes through it. 
So make sure this is selected, go to Shape Format, go to Shape Fill and select White. And then if I just zoom in, once again I need to make sure that the margin at the bottom is the same at the top. Now you can see this jumps. Now to smooth that action out, if you begin to move it, then hold down your Alt or Option key, you can see I've completely smoothed out that action there. What we're trying to do is to get the same distance at the top and the bottom. Then when you move this around, once again you can see it jumps, so hold down the Alt or Option key, and then what we're trying to do is to line up this box with this line. Then what we can do, let's just zoom out, is we can select this box, hold down your command or control key, select this box around the outside, go to align and select align to center, and it will make sure that this text is perfectly aligned to the center. And again, we can borrow this box, move that up to the top here, and then again, we can make sure that that square is perfectly lined up by just, whoops, Let's deselect them both, just reselect this one. We can move that, make sure it's on the line. Let's change the text. Okay, and what we can do is just make this box a little bit smaller. And then once again, we can select this outside box as well. Go to Shape, Format, Align, Align to Center. So that's how you produce this kind of look here. And if we just quickly go onto the internet, you can see this is the sort of effect that we're looking for. If we just look at lots of different designs, you can see that this kind of technique is used a lot where the actual words are put through the lines that surround the actual center text. So the following technique that I'm going to use, we're gonna borrow this box once again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the word. And then we're going to go to Shape Format. Then we're going to go to this icon here that says Text Direction. Click on the drop down and simply going to rotate all the text so that now our text is rotated. Then we can go to the Home tab and just reduce the size of the text. Now we're going to insert an image. So go to Insert, Pictures. You'll probably pick your picture from a file but I'm going to select stock images from Word and then you can search for whatever you want in this search bar at the top. I'm just going to select foliage. I'm just going to scroll down and select something I want to use. I'm going to select this picture here and click insert. Now whenever you insert an image into Word you can't move it so make sure it's selected. Go to picture format, go to wrap text and select in front of text and now we can move and resize it. There we go. And then if we want to place this text by the side here and also another set of text here, let's say we wanted to, whoops, and let's say we wanted this text going in the opposite direction. Let's go back to text direction. There we go. So to ensure there's equal spacing here and here, if we select this text, hold down the command or control key, select the image, then select this text here, go to align and select distribute horizontally. All of these will now be equally distributed. Go to align and select align to middle. And now they're all aligned to the middle. And then you can group them together if you want to and select group and then this will be all one group here. This will allow you now to go to a line and select a line to center, and now they'll all be perfectly lined up to the center of your page. Now we're just going to insert another page. Now another technique to use is tables. So go to insert, tables. We're just going to select three columns and two rows. Let's just zoom in. Now all I'm going to do is insert all of my text and speed up the video. Once I've done that, I'll come and show you the techniques to use. Okay, so we've got all of this text in. Now we're going to use a variety of different techniques just to look, make this look a lot more contemporary. So first of all, I'm going to select Portfolio, go to the Home tab, select Bold, and then once again, increase the size of that text. You can see 
that the row is getting a little bigger. That's absolutely fine. For this text here, I'm going to go to table layout and I'm going to change the alignment. Now in this section here, this dictates where your text will lie in your cell. So at the moment it's at the top left. I'm going to put it at the bottom left. Once again, go to the home tab, increase the size of the font and select bold. For this one here, I'm just going to select bold and I'm going to reduce the size of it. And again, table layout, the alignment is center left. Again, with this one, I'm going to make bold. And again, in the layout, center left. This one here, I'm actually going to put in the lower right. And if you have messed up the text in terms of the capitals or the sentence case, if you go to this icon here in the Home tab, you can change everything to uppercase or sentence case or capitalize each word. So for example, this one here, I want to capitalize each word. And then this one here, I'm just going to make bold and increase the font. I'm going to change the font to this one and then table layout I'm going to center it to the cell. The next thing I'm going to do is going to, going to select all four of these cells, go to table design, I'm going to go to the shading, click on the drop down, you can select from any color, but I've selected black. Once you've selected black, Word will automatically turn your text white. That's exactly what I want but I also want to show the lines of my table in the middle here. So once again, select those four cells by clicking and dragging across them. Then I'm going to go to pen color up here and select white. So this is now all your border lines, etc. Whichever ones you tell Word to turn white will now turn white. So go to borders and I just want my inside borders to turn white. And as you can see, Word has now done that, so we'll deselect it. Perfect, and that's the final look we're going for. Another technique, let's just borrow this text box here, then hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then I'm just going to type in a number. There we go. I'm going to increase the font size of it quite high, change the font. There we go. Then I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm also going to quickly go to shape format while they're both selected, go to shape fill and select no fill. That means, whoops, that means that now when I select one, I can put the text over the top, I can line them up, I can overlap them, and I can really customize the look I'm going for. But I'm gonna change this number. And this is just another design technique that you can use with numbers. I'm just going to select the bottom one, hold down the Alt or Option key, select the top one, go to a line, then select a line to left. Now they're both perfectly lined up. I can then use my arrow key to move this up if I wanted to, to move it closer. And then what I can also do is, this time I'm going to insert another text box. Then I'm going to insert some text. Then I'm going to go to Shape Format, take off the outline and the fill color. Then go to the Home tab, I'm going to change the font and then I'm going to go to Shape Format, Text Direction, Rotate 270. Now another interesting technique to use is I cannot line this text here with this box here. If I hold down the Alt or Option key, you can see this borderline here is down here for this text. And if I was to line this up through the alignment tools here, align to bottom, you can see it's going to align here, whereas actually I want to align this first letter with the bottom of this here. So the best way to do it, sorry it keeps jumping around, that's just what Word does unfortunately, is to line it up, and as you can see once again it keeps jumping, so hold down that Alt or Option key, line up that letter with the bottom, you can see it here, then, once you've done it, just literally press your arrow key to move that text out to the side. And then let's just move that in a little bit more. Once you're happy, then just select it all. Go to Shape Format, Group, 
and select group and now once again that's all one group and you can use that for a cover portfolio or any kind of other design you need. The final one I'm going to show you is how you can combine some graphics. So once again, we're just going to steal this box here. But this time we're going to start typing, but then in order to make the letters go directly horizontal, press the return key, press the next letter once again, and then we're going to go to the home tab once again, increase the font size. This is how we can make some vertical text as well. Then we can copy and paste it and then just change the font. Once again, pressing that return key. Just make the box a little bigger. And then if you wanted these at the edge of your page, once again, we can line them up. So select them both. Go to shape format, align, align to top, and then we're going to make sure there's no fill color in either of them. Then go to insert, shapes, click on the square, click and draw out a rectangle. Then go to shape format, shape fill. I'm just going to select a light gray, take off the outline, then go to send backwards, center back. And what I can do is just move that bit a little bit closer. Then what we can do is copy and paste that graphic, deselect, reselect this one, make it a little bit thinner, go to shape fill and make it darker. And then this is all personal choice. We can then center back, select both this rectangle here and this rectangle here, holding down that command or control key, align, align to left and then align, align to middle. Again, this is all personal preference, but what I have done is just shown you a multitude of different techniques that you can use to combine text, different sizes of text, different styles of text, graphics and images. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.